a simple pendulum of length L having a bob of mass M is suspended in a car. So we suspend a simple pendulum inside a car that is traveling with a constant speed V around the circular path of radius capital R. So this car is going round and round around a circular path and the radius is given to be capital R. Awesome. If the pendulum undergoes small oscillations about its equilibrium position, the frequency of oscillation will be. So we have to calculate what is the frequency of oscillations. This is the question. And now these are the options. Okay. Now tell me what is the formula of frequency? What is this frequency? Frequency is number of oscillations in one second. The formula is one upon time period. Amazing. Now, let's talk about this time period. The general formula of time period looks like this. Please mug up this formula right now. Time period is 2 pi under root L by G effective. Did you notice? Instead of G, I am writing G effective. You might ask, what is this G effective now? Well, I will tell you, don't worry about that. But uh, let me first uh, suspend the pendulum. So here is the simple pendulum. Inside the Jeep, we can see this bob. And on this bob, we have Mg. And another force is tension T. Now, if we look at this bob from a reference frame inside the Jeep like this. Suppose you are driving the Jeep and you look at this bob. So what will you see? You will see that uh, uh, there is a centrifugal force on the bob like this. Because after all, the Jeep is going around a circular track, right? The radius was given to be capital R of this track. So if we are inside this Jeep, we are in non-inertial reference frame and we have to write a pseudo force on this object also. What is the pseudo force? The centrifugal force, radially outwards. So centrifugal force, you remember, is mv squared by r. Amazing, amazing. So these are the forces. And you can see at equilibrium, what happens? When the object is under equilibrium, tension T balances the rest of the forces. So rest of the forces, uh, if I can sum them up, uh, I can write them as m times g factor. Yes. So at a particular angle, at a particular angle, let's say theta naught, the object is under equilibrium. Yes. And the object will oscillate around this equilibrium position like this. To and fro. Shoo. And shoo. Back again. Shoo. So this is the motion of this object around the equilibrium position. Okay. Okay. Now we have to calculate what is the... Uh, what is the mm, frequency of oscillation? Note, let me just write tension as T dash so that we don't confuse that with the time period. So tension is T dash. Okay. Okay. Now, let's talk about frequency of these oscillations. Frequency. This will be nothing but uh, 1 upon 2 pi. Uh, then we have under root of G effective divided by L. This will be frequency. Now you will ask, what is this G effective? How do we calculate this G effective? Well, you can see what is this G effective? M times G effective is the resultant of these two forces. Okay. So all the forces other than tension, if we sum them up, we can represent as a single force M times G effective. And from this, you can calculate what is this G effective. So we can see m times g effective is nothing but cool under root of m square g square plus m v square by r whole square. Okay? Okay. Now, g effective, this can be written as uh, m square g square plus uh, m square v raised to power 4 by r by r square and we divide this by m square everywhere so m square basically gets cancelled out bam 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 
So m square goes away. Let's not worry about m square now. So we have this thing raised to power half. This is g effective. Now, once you put this value of g effective, you will obtain the frequency. So we have g square plus v raised to power 4 by r square over here. And we uh, raise it to the power of half. So this is the frequency of oscillations. Nice, nice. So just remember this formula for time period and you will uh, get these questions very easily. So you can go and mark option B as the right answer for our question. A simple pendulum has time period T1. How sweet. There is a simple pendulum and the time period is T1. Nice. Now what is the formula of time period of a simple pendulum when it is on ground? The time period is 2 pi under root L by G. Very nice. Good. The point of suspension is now moved upward according to the relation Y is equals to KT square. So we are moving this point of suspension in the upward direction. Or you can say we are accelerating the entire setup like this. The relation is given to be Y is equals to KT square. So uh, if you differentiate this with respect to time, you will get what is velocity as a function of time and then what is the acceleration as the function of time. Nice. So we can see that there is some acceleration of this entire setup in the upward direction. Okay. Where Y is the vertical displacement and K is equals to 1. The time period now becomes T2. Then the ratio T1 square by T2 square is equal to. So the new time period is just T2. And we have to tell what is the ratio of T1 square by T2 square. This is the question. Did we get the question? Understood? Yes. Now, once we understood the question, let's begin to solve it. We have to calculate the new time period so that we can get the right answer. We can get the ratio and then we whole square this ratio. So we must know what is this T2. How do we calculate T2? Now, I will suggest you one awesome formula. This is the formula of calculating the time period. Instead of G, just put G effective. Now, when our entire setup is accelerating, even then we can calculate the time period. If we use G effective over here. Okay. Okay. Now, if you move into the reference frame of this entire uh, lift or you can say uh, entire setup. Uh, so we have MG in the downward direction. And once you are in non-inertial reference frame, so you have to draw a pseudo force also. Pseudo force is MA like this. It is in opposite direction to the acceleration of our reference frame. And the third force is tension T. Now, you can represent this thing only by two forces. One is tension T and another is M times G effective. So, M times G effective is the resultant of all the other forces except tension T. So, we can see that M G plus A will give us M times G effective. Mass gets cancelled out and we can obtain what is this G effective. So once we know what is this G effective, we can calculate what is the new time period T2 and then we can take the ratios of the time period and we can get the answer. Okay, fine. So we get the entire concept clear. Now what all are remaining? We don't know what is this acceleration. We have to calculate this acceleration, right? So let's, let's just calculate this acceleration. So Y was given to be KT square and K was 1. So I can write y as 1 times t square. Now if we differentiate this y with respect to time, dy by dt, this thing is nothing but 2t. And d square y, d square y by dt square is coming out to be 2. This is the acceleration. So simple. Acceleration a comes out to be 2. So what is this g effective? g effective we can just write it as G plus A or 10 plus 2, 12. This is G effective. Wow, we got it. So, we can calculate what is this T2 and also then we can calculate the ratio of time periods. So, we can say 
T1 by T2, uh, this will be nothing but uh, whole under root of, uh, uh, now when we use T1, we use G. When we use T1, we use G over here. So, let me write G over here. And when we use T2, we use G effective. Okay. So, let me just put G effective over here. Now, if we do the whole square, so T1 square by T2 square is nothing but G effective divided by G. And G effective came out to be 12. And G came out to be 10. It was, it was given to be 10. Uh, the acceleration due to gravity is 10. So, 12 by 10 is nothing but 6 by 5. So, this is the ratio, 6 by 5. And now we can go and mark option A as the right answer for this question. A meter stick swinging in vertical plane about a fixed horizontal axis passing through its one end undergoes small oscillations of frequency F0. So the frequency of the oscillation was given to be F0 for this meter stick of length L is equal to 1 meter. Now, if the bottom half of the stick is cut off, if the bottom half of the stick is cut off and glued to the upper half, then the new frequency for small oscillation is. So, we cut this bottom half, we glue it to the upper half, mass will remain the same, but the length will change. Length will become half. So, we will get some new frequency, let's call it F. What is the relationship between F and F0? This is the question. What is the relation between the new frequency and the old frequency? Now, what is the formula for frequency? Frequency, yeah, we remember. Frequency is 1 upon time period. Very nice, very nice. Now, tell me the time period for compound pendulums. The formula of time period for compound pendulum. If you remember it, I told you, mug it up. 2 pi under root I divided by mgd. This is the formula. Now, what is this I? I is the moment of inertia of the entire uh, object about the axis passing through the point of suspension. This is the moment of inertia. And if we have this uh, entire rod of length L, which is suspended about its end, the moment of inertia is ML square by 3. We remember the formula. What is this D? What do we mean by this D? D is the distance between the point of suspension and the center of mass. As we can see, this is simply L by 2. So, uh, we can calculate uh, the initial time period. Uh, T0, let me just write T0 as 2 pi under root. Now, I is ML square by 3. And then we have MGD. What is D? D is L by 2. Okay? Okay. 1 L gets cancelled out. Bam, bam. And M also gets cancelled out. Bam, bam. And we get the time period T0 as 2 pi under root of 2 L by 3 G. This is the time period T0. Fine, fine. Now, from this time period, we can also calculate the frequency. The frequency F0 is 1 upon 2 pi. And then we have uh, under root of 3G by 2L. This is the frequency F0. Amazing, amazing. Now, let's go to the second case where we cut the bottom half and we glue the bottom half to the upper half. Mass remains unchanged. Mass is still M. There is no loss in mass. But the length, we can see the total length now is L by 2. So, what will happen? Moment of inertia about an axis passing through the point of suspension will change. The new moment of inertia, let's call it I dash. What is the new moment of inertia? We can see it is M times something square by 3. What is this something? This something is the length of the rod, which is L by 2 over here. Yes. So, this is the new moment of inertia, I dash. And what is the uh, distance from the center of mass to the point of suspension? It is L by 4 now. Yes. The total length is L by 2 and half of it 
is L by 4. This is the distance from the center of mass to the point of suspension. And we can quickly use the formula. We will calculate the time period first. Time period T is 2 pi under root. Now we will write I. I can be written as M L square divided by, we have 4 threes are 12. And then we have uh, M G D. What is D? D is L by 4. Awesome. 4 threes are 12. And M cancels out. Bam, bam. L cancels out. Bam, bam. And then we get the time period to be coming out to be 2 pi under root of now we have L divided by 3G. L divided by 3G now. So frequency F is coming out to be 1 upon 2 pi. And then we have under root of 3G by L. Okay. So let's, let's see what was F naught. F naught was 1 upon 2 pi under root 3G by 2L. There was this 2 over here. See, there is this 2. And over here, we don't find this 2. There is nothing. There is 1 over here. Wow. So we can see what is the relation. F0, F0 came out to be 1 upon 2 pi. Uh, then we have under root of 3g by 2l. So what is the relation? Very simple. So if we divide F uh, by root 2, we will obtain F0. Or we can say F is equals to root 2 times F0. Can you say that? Yes. So we can just go and mark option A as the right answer for our question. An L shaped system of two identical rods of mass M and length L each are resting on a peg P as shown in the figure. So this is our peg P and we can see this peg P is passing through the ends of these two single rods. Now these rods are connected in L shaped. When you write L for lion, you can see the two sides are perpendicular to each other. So the angle between the two rods is also 90 degree. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, find the time period of oscillation if the system is displaced slightly in its plane by small angle theta. So we have to find what is the time period of oscillation. And these are the options. Okay. Okay. Now let's talk about the formula for finding the time period of a compound pendulum. Do you remember the formula? Yes, we do. Time period is T is equals to 2 pi whole under root of I divided by MGD. Now, what is I? What is I? I is the moment of inertia of the entire system about an axis passing through the point of suspension. In our case, what is I? In our case, uh, the moment of inertia of a single rod of length L and mass M about a point passing through its end is ML square by 3. So this is the moment of inertia of a single rod about an axis passing through its end point. Now, if we multiply it by 2, we will get the moment of inertia of our system, which comprises of two such rods. Okay? Okay. And what is M? What is M? M is the mass of the complete system. So in our case, one rod was of mass small m and another rod was of mass small m. So the total mass of the system is 2m. Yes, yes. Now what is this d? What is this d? d is the distance uh, from the point of suspension to the center of mass of the entire system. To the center of mass of the entire system. Yes. Now let's calculate this d. Hmm, this is interesting. So we have to talk about center of mass of the entire system. And this center of mass is not lying on any of the rod. It is outside these rods. This is interesting. So to mark the exact center of mass, we will first of all mark the center of mass of a single rod like this. This center of mass is at a distance of L by 2 from point P. Okay? Okay. And we mark the center of mass of another rod. This center of mass is at a distance of L by 2 from point P. Do you agree? Yes. Now, 
we can see we can represent a single rod by a single point at its geometric center yes so this is the center of mass of a single rod and we can concentrate the entire mass at this point so for the other rod we also concentrate its entire mass at a single point now we have these two points let's forget about the rod let's look at only these two points so if you have two masses like this two point masses like this and they have equal mass where will their center of mass lie you will say exactly at the middle yes this is the location of center of mass so if we look this c is exactly in the middle okay now can we find uh, what is the distance from point p to point c yes we can we can see we have a beautiful right angle triangle over here and one angle is 45 degree yes yes now this side is l by uh, 2 l by 2 is the hypotenuse sine of 45 sine of 45 is 1 by root 2 and the other side of this triangle is l by 2 cos of 45 degree and cos of 45 degree is 1 by root 2 so uh, we get everything and this side we can also find this is also l by 2 root 2 so we know what is the location of center of mass anyway we wanted this distance and this distance came out to be uh, l by 2 root 2 this is d this is d d is l by 2 root 2 let me go back so i will write d is equals to l by 2 root 2 okay okay so we got everything now so let's calculate what is the time period time period is coming out to be 2 pi under root then i i is 2 ml square by 3 and then we have mass mass of the entire system is 2m so let me just write 2m over here and then g then d what is d d is l by 2 root 2 so 2 root 2 is written over here now something will get cancelled out 2 cancels out 2 bam bam mass cancels out mass bam bam and l cancels out 1l bam bam now what are we getting we are getting uh I will write that in blue color so we are getting 2 pi under root now we have 2 uh, root 2 in the denominator 2 root 2 l in the numerator in the denominator we have 3 g okay okay so 2 pi uh, then whole under root of in the numerator we have 2 root 2 l in the denominator we have 3 g so let's mark the correct option and option B is the right answer for our question. Consider the following data and choose the correct option. So we have these four data information. Information one, the time period of simple pendulum whose bob is hollow metallic sphere is T. So if we have hollow metallic sphere like this, the time period is given to be T. Second, the time period of simple pendulum is T1 when the bob is filled with sand. So if we fill this bob completely with sand, then the time period is T1. 3. Time period of the simple pendulum is T2 when it is filled with mercury. So when we fill this metallic sphere completely with mercury, time period is T2. And then last one, the time period of the simple pendulum is T3 when it is half filled with mercury as shown. So we have very less mercury. We fill this only up to half of its uh, entire volume. So time period of this simple pendulum is given to be T3. Okay. Okay. Now we have to compare these time periods in the options. What is the correct comparison of these time periods? So everything depends. If you remember the formula of time period of a simple pendulum do you remember the formula yes we do okay tell me the formula what is the formula of time period time period of a simple pendulum is simply 2 pi under root l by g very nice very nice i'm proud of you what do you mean by l what is this l in this formula l well l is the distance from the point of suspension to the center of mass of the object yes 
this distance is L. You are right. So everything depends on the center of mass of the suspended object. Oh ho. So in the first case, where is the center of mass? We have a hollow metallic sphere. Where is the center of mass of the hollow metallic sphere? It is at its geometric center, right? So let's mark this distance from the point of suspension to the center of mass to be L, right? Okay. Now consider the uh, second case in which we fill this hollow metallic sphere with sand. Now if we fill the sand entirely up to the brim, then the center of mass of this complete thing is at its geometric center. Do you agree with that? Yes. Okay. So this distance is also L. And in the third case, instead of sand, we fill it with mercury up to the brim. So in the third case also, the center of mass will be at its geometric center. Yes, we can see that. So in the third case also, we have this distance as L again. Now in the fourth case, in the fourth case, where is the center of mass of this complete thing? Where is the center of mass? You will say, well, according to us, we can see the center of mass to be in lower half. Exactly. Because we only filled it with mercury only up to half of its volume. Yes. So the center of mass of this entire thing which is suspended must lie in the lower half. Exactly. Now you can see that in this case, the length from the point of suspension is different. It is L dash. Is it greater than L? Yes, it is greater than L. Wow. So in case 1, 2 and 3, length is same. L is same. But in the fourth case, L dash. L dash is greater than L. So what about the time period? G is same for everyone. So time period T1 is equal to uh, time period T is equal to time period T2. So these three time periods are equal. In the first case, time period was T. In the second case, time period was T1. In the third case, the time period was T2. And in the last one, the time period is T3. In the last one, L dash is greater than L. So time period T3 must be greater than time period T2, T1 and T. Yes? Yes. So what is the right answer? We can see that option D is the right answer for this question.